It is 5.30 in the morning, and man, at least it's not 90 degrees like it was the other day. I had to stop by Hooked Up Bait and Tackle and grab some live shrimp, and we're going to get on our way and go fishing. It's a beautiful morning. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another Bama Saltwater Fishing episode. If this is your first time tuning into my channel and watching my videos, what is going on? How are you doing? If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. If you already are, I really appreciate you. I'm out here on this beautiful morning at the seawall here in Orange Beach in my beautiful hometown. I've got a crap ton of live shrimp in my angle and I got some ice in case I keep some fish. But uh, I'm going to start out by throwing a popping cork with the DOA on it just because I already had this thing tied up from yesterday and there's a bunch of bait popping and I'm going to see if I can do anything with that. I start out by throwing it on the Bandstall VR50 20 pound Yozuri Super Braid on my 7 foot medium heavy St. Croix Avid Inshore Rod. But any 3,000 to 4,000 size reel, any 7 foot to 7.5 foot rod will work perfect here. Medium action medium heavy all right i don't know how well you can see this but all i'm throwing is a popping cork this is a doa shrimp with the gold glitter glow top about two feet of 15 pound yozuri hd fluorocarbon and then a doa clacker popping cork i'm gonna cast this out and then you just let it sit there and then every few seconds give it a pop what's happening is these fish think these shrimp are jumping up out of the water or fish are trying to eat these shrimp and they get an instinct of hey 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 there's fish feeding let me go get in on some of this action here and that's all that popping cork does make just a few more casts with this i'm gonna switch to carolina rig not really seeing any action on top right now usually you'll see some action out here you'll see some sort of blow ups or some sort of bait popping up but i don't see any right now Maybe once the sun comes up a little more, they'll get a little more active. Oh, something tried to hit it. Oh, they're trying to hit my bobber. Something's hitting it. Come on. All right, they just wanted a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> Let's see if we can try that again. They just wanted more aggressive pop. I'm gonna make one last cast with the popping cork. Now I'm gonna switch to a live shrimp on a Carolina rig here. It's time to get a live shrimp out of the angle. And I like to hook my shrimp through where the horn meets the rest of the body. But I'm just running a Carolina rig. I have a one aught non-stainless circle hook, which you have to use if you're fishing for reef species, such as mangrove snapper. 15 pound Yozuri fluorocarbon, small spro power swivel, and then a three quarter ounce egg weight. Throwing it on the same rod and reel here, the 20 pound Yozuri braid. So we're gonna drop it straight down, parallel to the wall, see if we can find anything. And with these circle hooks, you don't sit there and jerk it like you do like a bass. You literally put pressure on it and start reeling. And if it's a fish worthy of hooking, the majority of the time it'll be hooked. All right, let's see what I got. Ooh, something, something with some weight to it. Be a mangrove. Be a mangrove. Oh no. <laughs> Big fish. That's funny. Big fish. That's why they call them pig fish. All right, let's throw this sucker back. There you go. All righty, I got another beautiful shrimp on. I'm gonna toss this sucker down. Throw it parallel to the wall. Let it go down to the bottom again. There's a, there's a fish. Oh, dang, this has got some weight to it. Let's see what it is. <laughs> it's got some weight to it. I don't know what it is, but we'll find out real quick. Oh, it's a mangrove. I don't know if it's going to be a keeper, but it might. Got some good weight to them. That one might be a keeper. That is a stud mangrove. I got my measuring tape. I'm going to go measure them and make sure he's legal. Definitely never want to stick your finger near their mouth. They have some serious teeth. To fish for these and, and keep these, they do have to be 12 inches, and you have to have a reef fish endorsement in the state of Alabama along with your saltwater fishing license. Oh, yeah. He's almost at 14. He's at 13 and a half, so gonna keep him beautiful mangrove here delicious eating fish he's got a beautiful mangrove snapper so sun's just now coming up and uh this one's a keeper he measured out to be 13 and a half inches so we're gonna throw them in the cooler and to keep these mangrove snapper they have to be 12 inches first off you have to be using a non-stainless steel circle hook and you have to have the alabama reef fish endorsement which is in addition to your alabama saltwater fishing license to be able to keep those so if you get checked you want to make sure you have all that and uh, but majority of this mangrove snapper that you catch over here is going to be like 11 inches 10 and a half so when you get a good one it's worth keeping because they're delicious eating so i'm going to bait up and get another shrimp i'm going to check my leader and my hook because i was pretty rough on my hook with the pliers yeah, I need to put on another hook. I bent the heck out of that one. So time to put on another circle hook. Another hook on, and I got another shrimp on. Oh, there's one. Let's see what you are. Feels like another mangrove. All right, I just caught this mangrove snapper. I don't know if Phil's recording. He is right past the 12 inch mark, so he's gonna go in the cooler. Beautiful fish. 
Heck yeah. I was literally about to leave. And I was like, if I just get a pinfish on this cast, I'm heading out. And then this mangrove decided to eat. So we'll put him next to our other one. These are my absolute favorite fish. And then a flounder is real close to it in eating quality. And man, are they beautiful too. So cool. Got two keeper mangrove. That's awesome. See, I love using live bait, and so I, I use these angle bait coolers, and then they just, they usually come with the aerator, but this one has to have the uh, hush bubbles on there. But you do have to have an aerator. It is 100% necessary to keep these shrimp alive is an aerator this time of year. So, And then the angles keep the water very cool, so your oxygen level stays pretty high. But I'll include these uh, angles down in the video description below if you want to pick you up one. All right, they're just stealing my bait. So what I'm going to do is hook my shrimp a different way now. Alrighty, I'm gonna hook my shrimp a different way. So I'm gonna pinch off the tail section right here. Throw that out. Take my circle hook and run it through the body of the shrimp. Just like that. And now you have a shrimp with your circle hook ran through, but you still leave the point exposed. And so he's still alive and he's still kicking. But let's see if the hookup ratio can be a little better. I do this a lot when I'm fishing the gas rigs. See? And just like that, there's a fish, which I think this is a pig fish, personally, or big pin fish. Yeah, it's another pig fish, but hey, the technique worked, so I hooked the fish instead of them just stealing my bait. Well, I just caught like a brand new gotcha plug, so that's pretty cool. Luckily, I was able to catch two keeper mangroves, but I'm gonna take those home and clean them up and cook them. I gotta pack all my stuff up, carry it back to the truck, and head back home, and uh, we'll get to the cleaning. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. So before I go though, I just made a little salt brine here. I took my shrimp water, which is actually really clean. Oh, if it's really dirty, obviously don't do that. But this is really salty, clean shrimp water, and uh, I mixed it together with my ice. And all it does is bring that temperature of that ice down because of salt in it. And your fish get full contact because ice cubes just contact little surface area. When it's submerged in salt water with ice, you get full contact. All surfaces of the fish will be cool. So it keeps them fresher longer. All right, we're going to head out. Touch up my filet knife real quick. This requires a couple passes. All right. And all this is just a Harbor Freight belt sander with, with the belt kit I got off of Amazon, which if I remember, I'll try to link that down in the uh, description below. I'll tell you what, the inshore bite's been on fire for the past couple days. Man, I also put in a lot of time and experiment with a bunch of different stuff to be able to be successful. All right, I have one of my Dexter filet knives here and my two mangrove snapper. And I'm just gonna clean these, flame them up real quick. They're really easy to filet, really simple. Cut right behind that rib cage, straight down at an angle. And I flip it around, cut just an incision straight along the back here, top of the fish. And then I'll go through and just don't cut through the bones, but keep your knife right along the bone here so you don't miss any meat and just fillet it right off the fish. See, I'm pulling back and I'm taking my knife and moving it right along here, all the way down. Then I'll poke through once I get to the bottom, cut it down, but not all the way to the end. Off, flip it around. Take my electric knife, pull the fish, and run that through. And then I have a perfectly skinned fish here, and I'll go cut out the red meat. So now I'm gonna cut out the pin bones and the rib cage bones. And that is a beautiful fillet right there. And you can go through and trim up that red meat. There's not too much of it like there is in some other fish. Gonna do the same thing to the other side, really easy. All right, now I have four beautiful fillets off this mangrove snapper, and these will be ready to fry. Alrighty, it's a beautiful day out here. Check that out, got a nice little breeze going. Got beautiful old glory over there flying proud. And I got the fryer out. I'm gonna take some of the vegetable oil and fill this up here. All right, that's enough. Now I'm gonna set it to 350 degrees. And I'm gonna let that warm up. So once that light goes off, this will be ready. All right, all my oil is heating up. I'm gonna make my batter. I don't use an egg wash. I literally just use two ingredients. The Zatarain's Crispy Southern Fish Fry. I love this stuff. And then I have some Chef Paul's to mix in with it. So I'm gonna put this in my mixing bowl here. Got that poured in there. I'm gonna take just a small spoonful of this, just enough to have a little dusting within that, cause that's good on its own, but I like to add a little bit more flavor to it. So I'm gonna take some of my Chef Paul's Seafood Magic and give it a good mix in there. Just a dusting, 
you know, nothing too crazy. And I'll include all these down in the uh, description below like I do all my videos so you can pick you some up if you want to use it. This is probably my absolute favorite seasoning of all time. All I'm going to do is shake it up to where the mix is very consistent here. All right, and that is ready. It is all mixed up. I got my fish in here. I have my redfish on the bottom and I have my mangrove snapper on top. I have it separated by some parchment paper. I'm going to do the mangroves first. So my oil is at 350 degrees. I'm going to take my mangrove snapper fillets and do all these first here. If you're unsure if your temperature's right, say you don't have a thermometer or anything, you can dip it in at first. And if it's not sizzling, obviously take it out. But this is sizzling, so we're going to leave it in. I'm going to coat the rest of these fillets here. I cut them into smaller pieces. It's only two mangroves, but I got a decent amount of meat from it. And this is exactly what you want. You want them to be bubbling like that. If you put it in there and nothing happens, your, your temperature is not high enough. You need to take it back out and let it get warmer. Alrighty, last piece of mangrove snapper. And that was a nice big piece. And we're going to let these fry for about five minutes or until they're golden brown. And they'll start floating. They'll come up on top. So right now they're at the bottom. Once they come up on top and it's been about five minutes, they're ready to pull out. Man, if y'all could just smell this right now. Ooh, smells delicious. Alrighty, it has been five minutes. Since these are smaller pieces, five minutes is more than enough for these and they're starting to float. So let's get ready to take them out. And I'll have you a paper towels on some plate or some newspaper, a brown paper bag to let these grease or oil drain off these fish. So I just do a paper towel on a plate. But check these out. If y'all could smell through the screen, man, it smells delicious. So there's the last little two pieces of the mangrove snapper. Gonna let those cool down and I'm gonna get the redfish here that I caught the other day and batter those up and put them in the oil. Alrighty, so this is my mangrove snapper. I'm gonna try a piece of that while my redfish is cooking, but I'm gonna try a piece of this crispy mangrove snapper. Mangrove snappers and flounder are my top two favorite fish to eat. There's a lot that come close, but mangrove snapper is my number one favorite fish. So I'm gonna try a piece of this mangrove here. Mm, 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 mm. Man, it's still hot. <laughs> but you can't get any better tasting fish than that. Five minutes is more than enough for a small piece like this so it doesn't dry out. Perfect crispiness. And look at that beautiful white flaky meat. Man, this is just so good. Check out how beautiful that meat is on the inside. Nothing off color about it, no bloodline. Perfectly white. Would not hesitate to serve this to anybody. And my family and I eat this a bunch. So I'm gonna continue munching down even though it's still freaking pretty dang hot right now because it just came out of the fryer, but it is just so good. Perfect crispiness with that batter. Then that Chef Paul's adds some pretty good flavor in there where it's not too salty at all, but still has some good seasons, so. Mm. That is delicious. <laughs> all right, these chunks of redfish were a little bit thicker, so I'm letting them cook a little bit longer than five minutes. Five minutes is a good norm for frying fish, smaller pieces, but on thicker pieces, on 350 degrees you know a couple more minutes isn't going to hurt i'm going to continue munching down on this freaking mangrove snapper it is so good the redfish is ready it's been frying for about seven minutes so you don't want to overcook your stuff so it doesn't dry out but i want to keep them separate from the mangrove just so we know which one's which set them on here let that oil drain off of them that's what the paper towel is for because you don't want to be eating a whole bunch of grease oh boom what's up buddy are we letting our fish cool before we eat it what's up bobo hmm what you doing? So I have the redfish right here. It's still really hot, so we're gonna let it cool down first. And then I've been eating a lot of the mangrove snapper. But, but here's mom. She's gonna try some of the mangrove here. And then once that redfish cools down, we'll both try it. All righty. mangrove, fresh caught. That's freshly caught this morning. <laughs> that is so good. It is oh pretty delicious. Oh my gosh, that is so good. <laughs> mm, thank you. It's still pretty hot, but yeah. It's perfect. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I'm gonna keep on eating me a piece. So we're just gonna munch down on this. We got a dolphin jumping behind of us. Seems like in every video, it's pretty cool. You can see that every day. But I got a nice piece of this redfish. Still pretty hot, but I'm gonna taste test. Look how white and flaky that meat is. Mm. You cannot go wrong with a fillet of a piece of redfish. Especially one, you know, 17, 18 inches within that slot limit. Once they get bigger, they can get pretty tough. 
but those right there i'll eat all day but i appreciate you watching if you enjoyed this video hit that like button down below it's that thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below i really appreciate it i appreciate everybody that already has subscribed don't forget to hit that bell for notifications for when new videos come out you can be one of the first to watch if you haven't already check out my facebook and instagram page it's bama saltwater and my tiktok is bama underscore saltwater like i said we're going to finish eating our lunch and go run our errands for the day we got a beautiful nice breezy summer day here in south alabama but i appreciate you watching we'll see you on the next episode I want to thank the good lord up above for everything he does for us we'll see you later